دعوة الكتاب والسنة وعلى منهج السلف الصالح The following is a portion of a recorded lesson by the Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen alayhi rahmatullah. He is explaining the hadith of the hawd of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it contains a refutation of the rafidah. ثم ذكر أنه يؤتى برجال من أمته فيؤخذ بهم ذات الشمال أي إلى طريق أهل النار والعياذ بالله فيقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أصحابي يعني يشفع إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى فيه فيقال له إنك لا تدري ماذا أحدث بعدك It is mentioned that men will be brought to it meaning the hawd from his ummah and they will be taken off to the left meaning to the direction of the people of the hellfire and Allah's refuge is sought the Prophet وسلم, will say my companions meaning he will try to intercede with Allah on their behalf it will be said to him you do not know what they invented after you كما قال العبد الصالح يعني به عيسى بن مريم حين قال حين يقول يوم القيامة إذا قال الله تعالى له يا عيسى بن مريم أأنت قلت للناس اتخذوني وأمي إلهين من دون الله كما يزعم النصارى الذين يقولون إنهم متبعون له أأنت قلت للناس اتخذوني وأمي إلهين من دون الله قال سبحانك ما يكون لي أن أقول ما ليس لي بحق لأن الألوهية ليست حقا لأحد إلا لله رب العالمين ما ما يكون لي أن أقول ما ليس لي بحق إن كنت قلته فقد علمته تعلم ما في نفسي ولا أعلم ما في نفسك إنك أنت علام الغيوب ما قلت لهم إلا ما أمرتني به أن يعبد الله ربي وربكم وكنت عليهم شهيدا ما دمت فيهم فلما توفيتني كنت أنت الرقيب عليهم وأنت على كل شيء شهيد So I will say meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say just as the righteous servant of Allah said he is referring to Isa ibn Maryam when he will say on the day of judgment when Allah says to him O Isa son of Maryam did you say unto men, Worship me and my mother as two gods besides Allah? As the Christians claim, those who say that they follow him. Allah will say, O Isa, the son of Maryam, did you say unto men, Worship me and my mother as two gods besides Allah? He will say, Glory be unto you. It was not for me to say that which I had no right to say. This is because divinity is a right that belongs to none except Allah so he will say had I said such a thing you would surely have known it you know what is in my inner self though I do not know what is in yours truly you only you are the all knower of all that is hidden and unseen never did I say to them aught except that which you did command me to say worship Allah my Lord and your Lord I was a witness over them while I dwelt amongst them. But when you took me up, you were the watcher over them, and you are a witness of all things. So when it is said to the Prophet وسلم, on the day of judgment, you do not know what they invented after you he will say I was a witness over them while I was amongst them when you caused me to die you were a watch over them and you are a witness over all things ثم إنهم ثم يقال للرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام إنهم ما زالوا مرتدين على أعقابهم منذ فارقتهم فأقول سحقا سحقا 
قوله إنهم لن يزالوا مرتدين على أدبارهم منذ فارق على أعقابهم منذ فارقتهم تمسك به الرافضة الذين قالوا إن الصحابة كلهم مرتدوا عن الإسلام والعياذ بالله ومنهم أبو بكر وعمر وعثمان أما علي وآل البيت فهم لم يرتدوا على زعمهم ولا شك أنهم في هذا كاذبون Then it will be said to the Prophet وسلم, They continue to be apostates Turning back on their heels since you left them So I, meaning the Prophet وسلم, Will say, away with them, away with them So as it relates to the statement They continue to be apostates Turning back on their heels since you left them The Rafida cling to this Those who say regarding the companions that all of them apostated from Islam and the refuge of Allah is sought. From them is Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman. As for Ali and the members of the household, only they did not become apostates according to their claim. And there is no doubt that they are liars in this. <laughs> وكذلك عامة أصحاب النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام لم يحصل منهم ردة بإجماع المسلمين إلا قوم من العرب كانوا حديث عهد بالإسلام لما مات النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام افتتنوا وارتدوا على أدبارهم ومنعوا الزكاة حتى قاتلهم الخليفة الراشد أبو بكر رضي الله عنه وعادوا إلى الإسلام عاد أكثرهم نان of the four Khulafa committed apostasy by consensus of the Muslims. Likewise, the general body of the companions did not fall into apostasy by consensus of the Muslims, with the exception of a people from the Arabs who were new to Islam when the Prophet ﷺ died. They were put to trial and they turned their backs and they withheld the payment of the zakat until the rightly guided Khalifa Abu Bakr anhu, fought them and they returned to Islam. Most of them came back. ولكن الرافضة من شدة حنقهم وبغضهم لأصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تمسكوا بظاهر هذا الحديث. أما أهل السنة والجماعة فقالوا إن هذا الحديث عام يراد به الخاص. وما أكثر العام الذي يراد به الخاص. فقول أصحابي يعني ليسوا كلهم. بل الذين ارتدوا على أتباعهم. لأن هكذا قيل للرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام إنهم لم يزالوا على مرتدين على أقابهم منذ فارقتهم ومعلوم أن الخلفاء الراشدين وعامة أصحاب النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام لم يرتدوا بالإجماع However, the Rafidah from the severity of their rage and their hatred for the companions of the Prophet وسلم, they clung to what they deemed to be apparent from this hadith As for Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah they say concerning this hadith that it is general, but what is intended by it is specific. And how numerous are those texts which are general, but the intended meaning behind them is specific. So he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, "My companions," but he did not mean all of them. Rather, those who apostated, because this is what the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said with his statement. Indeed, they continued to apostate ever since you left them. And it is known by consensus that the rightly guided Khulafa and the companions of the Prophet وسلم, in general did not apostate. ولو قدر أنهم ارتدوا لم يبقى لنا ثقة بالشريعة ولهذا كان الطعن في الصحابة يتضمن الطعن في شريعة الله ويتضمن الطعن برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ويتضمن الطعن بالله رب العالمين and if they had apostated, then they would not have been trustworthy with the conveyance of the Sharia. Due to this, revilement of the companions comprises revilement of the Sharia of Allah. And it comprises revilement of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it comprises revilement of Allah, Lord of the Alameen. <laughs> أربعة محاذير والعياذ بالله ومنكرات عظيمة الطعن في الصحابة والطعن في الشريعة والطعن في النبي والطعن في رب العالمين 
لكنهم قوم لا يفقهون صم بكم عمي فهم لا يعقلون. Those who revile the companions, then this comprises revilement of four sacred affairs, and Allah's refuge is sought, and it contains great munkar. The first is revilement of the companions. The second is revilement of the sharia. The third is revilement of the prophet. The fourth is revilement of the Lord of the Alameen. But they are people who understand not. They're deaf, dumb, and blind, and they have no intellect. أما كونه طعن في الشريعة فلأن الذين نقلوا إلينا الشريعة هم الصحابة وإذا كانوا مرتدين والشريعة جاءت من طريقهم فإن لا تقبل لأن الكافر لا يقبل خبر بل الفاسق يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبين As for it being revilement of the sharia it is because those who transmitted the sharia were the companions so if they were apostates and the sharia came by way of them, then it would not be accepted, because the report of the kafir is not accepted. Rather, even the fasiq, Allah says, O you who believe, if a fasiq comes to you with news, verify it. لأن القرين على دين قرين وكل إنسان يعاب بقرين إذا كان قرينه سيئا يقال فلان ما في خير قرناعه فلان وفلان وفلان فالطعن في الأصحاب طعن بالمصاح As for it being revilement of Allah's messenger then it is said that if the companions of the Prophet وسلم, were of this caliber regarding kufr and wickedness then this is revilement of the messenger because the companion is upon the deen of his companion and every person is criticized on account of his companion it is said so and so is no good his friends are so and so and so and so and so and so so revilement of the companion is revilement of the one that he accompanied وأما كونه طعن بالله رب العالمين فضاح جدا أن يجعل أفضل الرسالات وأعمها وأحسنها على يد هذا الرجل الذي هؤلاء أصحابه وأيضا أن يجعل أصحاب هذا النبي الذي هو أفضل الأنبياء صلوات الله وسلامه عليه مثل هؤلاء الأصحاب الذين زعمت الرافضة أنهم ارتدوا على أكباره As for it being revilement of Allah, Lord of the Alameen, it is very clear. It is that he placed the best of the messages the most comprehensive of them and the greatest of them in the hands of this man whom these were his companions. Also that he, meaning Allah, would make the companions of this prophet who is the best of the prophets salawatullahim wa salamu alayh to be the likes of these companions who the Rafidah claim have apostated. <laughs> على الصحابة رضي الله عنه وعدوان على الله ورسوله وشريعة الله أن يقدح في الصحابة حملة الشريعة رضوان الله عليه ولا شك أننا نكن الحب لجميع أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولآل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المؤمنين ونرى أن لآله المؤمنين حقين حق الإيمان وحق قربهم من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قل لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا المودة في القربة يعني إلا أن تودوا قرابتي على أحد التفاسير والتفسير الآخر إلا المودة في القربة يعني إلا أن تودوني لقرابتي منكم Due to this we believe that this is a great transgression against the companions may Allah be pleased with them an enmity against Allah and his messenger and the Sharia of Allah, that the companions, the carriers of the Sharia are criticized, may Allah's pleasure be upon them. There is no doubt that we have love for all of the companions of the Prophet and for the believing family members of the Prophet and we hold that for the believing family members of the Prophet there are two rights, the right of Iman and the right 
of relationship to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As Allah says, "Say, O Muhammad, no reward do I ask of you for this, except al muwadda fil qurba." This means that you should love my relatives, based upon one explanation of this verse. In another explanation, "Illa al muwadda fil qurba" means except that you should love me due to my relation to you wa ala kulli hal hadha al hadith laysa fihi matma' lil rafiq fi al qadh bi ashab an nabiy sallallahu alayhi wasallam li'annahu la yastuq illa ala man irtaddu amma man baqu ala al islam wa ajma' al muslimun ala hidayatihim wa dirayatihim fa innahum la yadkhuluna fi hadha fi hadha al hadith ويقال إن الذي خصص هذا الحديث إجماع المسلمين على أنهم لم يرتد وإنما ارتد الطائفة قاتلهم أبو بكر رضي الله عنه ورجع أكثرهم للإسلام. At any rate, this hadith doesn't contain evidence for the rafida for criticism of the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم because it is not applied except to those who apostated. As for those who remained upon Islam. And the Muslims are in agreement regarding their guidance and their knowledge, and they do not enter into this hadith. And it is said that that which makes this hadith specific is the consensus of the Muslims upon the fact that they did not apostate. Only a group apostated, whom Abu Bakr fought against, and most of them returned to Islam. Mm-hmm.